Okay, so whenever you do a video, like for sure, for sure video, images don't always have to be on the page first, but video, yeah. Just upload it like you would any other post and that is the actual ad. So what you'll wanna do always is, is just make sure that, that all the text, make sure that the headline, make sure that the, the thumbnail, which we'll, walk, we'll, we'll go through the whole walkthrough right now, but you'll always wanna make sure that everything is, is, is perfect right here, right now because the moment we go and set up the actual ad, we can no longer change the text. So if we miss a period, if we miss a comma, if we miss a capital letter or whatever, you can no longer change it. So you wanna just make sure that everything is good to go here first, and then we'll go and set the ad. So you have the video in your download folder. Now we'll just come over here and, and, and post it like anything else. What, what I normally do though, is I all, rather than doing it here, what I'll do is I'll click on more and then just go to videos and then I'll just add it over here. So okay. upload video and then, um, yeah, grab it from your computer and then we'll just go through the whole walkthrough from here. Awesome. Okay, cool. Perfect. So, so now you'll just write out and it, it doesn't have to be extensive. It could be something basic. Like it could be something super basic, this text part. Um, I don't know if you have something in mind or, or if you need, help with this part um but not really i mean whatever you think would grab people maybe well, a, a suggestion would be <laughs> just just a just nice. like a friendly hello like because you, all you're doing is calling out your market all you're doing is is introducing yourself so maybe something like mm -hmm. hey what, what city are you in charlotte. charlotte you're in charlotte okay so um maybe something like Maybe something like, hey, Charlotte homeowners, my name is Megan. I just wanted to personally introduce myself as your local realtor and let you know a little bit about me and how excited I am to help our local community buy and sell real estate in the greater Charlotte area or something like that. Um, hey, Charlotte homeowners, my name is Megan. I just wanted to introduce myself as your local realtor or real estate agent or whatever word you want to use. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself and, 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 and let you know why I'm so excited to help people buy and sell real estate or something like that. Um, hey, Charlotte homeowners, my name is Megan. I just wanted to introduce myself as your local real estate agent. I wanted to share, share with you a little bit about myself and why I'm so excited. Perfect. That's perfect right there. That's perfect. And that, that, that also leads a little bit of curiosity where, you know, someone wants to know, okay, well, shit, what's she, what is she excited about? Right. So excited to help you along your journey. So, and why I'm so excited to help you along your journey. Okay. Perfect. That's fine. That's fine. So go yeah. ahead and go to, go to, um, click on publishing options. Cause that's a new feature right there, but I think that might take us to where we need to go. Publishing options. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So this is where we want to be. So if, yeah, this is where we want to be. So right here, the video title, um, that is the actual headline. So that is what goes below the video as the ad runs. Okay. So so something something short and catchy here. Um, um, do you want my name in that or? Well, go ahead and, go ahead and open up know. a new tab. Let me show you where that goes. Open up a new tab, go to Facebook and just go to the newsfeed and let's just look at... Um, a random, a random ad. So if we scroll down, you'll see right here. So that's the title. So HubSpot free CRM right there, the bottom left of the image that right there. So that's, that's how much space you have, right? So yeah. from there all the way to the learn more button, that's how much space you have. So normally it's about, it's, it's like a short sentence, um, but that's where it would go. So it's what, it's what we call a headline, but in this case, it's, it's, it's a title. So, so yeah, just go back to the other tab. So that is what would go right there. So um, the text said, oh, I forgot what the damn text said. So let's, um, a little bit, a little <laughs> bit about myself, your local realtor, or a little bit about, a little bit about why I'm so excited. A little bit. A little about why I am so excited, and then maybe dot dot dot. So when it comes to when it comes to this when it comes to the title when it comes to the text, 
that's in the digital in the digital marketing world that's what we call ad copy it's ad copy so what makes a good person what makes a person good with ad copy is the ability to to tell a story so and it doesn't have to be a long story like it like when it comes to start when you start putting these ads out you want to tell you want to you want to tell it you you want to tell some type of story and so right here a little bit about why I'm so excited. Like that right there is a storyline. Like now yeah. you're about to tell me a story of why you're so excited, right? It's a story. Like, and, and so let's say, for example, you're doing, let's say, let's say you're, you're, you, you, you start running ads on, on the seller guide. The text can start being something like telling stories about your previous client. Hey guys, this is Megan. I just wanted to come on here real quick to tell you a quick story about my recent client. Right. And now you're just taking me on a journey of explaining your experience with your recent client. It's a story. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. So so that's how you want to look at these ads. That's how you want to look at your text, I should say, of in your ads is is, is leaving curiosity and, and storytelling. That's what we, we all are attracted to, to story. That's what makes people a good public speaker is they can tell a story. That's what makes people good with advertising. They can tell a story. That's what makes people buy is because of the story that they just read. It's always about a story. And, and again, it's, it's not a long story. It could be a short story. It could be a couple sentence type of storyline, you know, but you'll get good at, you'll get, knowing that you'll start to get better. You'll, you'll start putting different phrases together as if you're telling a story, telling someone a story. So you'll get better at that part for sure. Okay. So the tags, you don't need to worry about that right now. And then, and then the captions, um, you can always add captions, but that, that part's super time consuming. Um, so normally I don't add captions. I'll let Facebook just do it automatically. Um, and then you can change the thumbnail. So hit the drop down on the thumbnail. And then down here, it'll show you um, choose suggested or choose from video. Go ahead and choose from video. And then it'll just give you like a slide of, of all of them. So you can, you can just, you could take that bar and just move it over and just, that's actually a good thumbnail right there to tell you the truth. Yeah. I was going to say, I like the one you already right? have. Yeah, I you know, actually already cropped my, like I edited the video. So it would start on a good one. So awesome, I don't know how perfect. I go back. Oh, you're good. So then, I, yeah, it already looks good. I don't think how know. do I go back? Cause that's not it anymore. <laughs> so can you, um, shit, it's gone now. Well, you is it the, is it you the could, first part of the video? It, you could, there it is. Oh, perfect. Maybe, I think. Yeah, it looks good. I purposely went and picked it, but I don't know because it looks different here. Why don't you go ahead and just go up to the title and just cut that, copy it, yeah. like cut it. And start and, over. Yeah, just cancel and do it again. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there we go. So awesome. I'll leave it. Perfect. Okay, cool. So you're good there and then just save. Okay, perfect. So now we have, now we have that title. We have the text. So that's why it's always good to look at this with, with maybe someone else. That way, you know, if you don't catch the error, maybe I'll catch the error, but error, but if do any of us like see anything wrong with that text? Because again, once we save it, then it's, 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 it's safe. No, it looks okay. good. It looks good, right? Yeah. Perfect. So go ahead and post. Awesome. So now we have it there um, on the page and then, um, yeah, you can exit out of that. And so just go ahead and, and refresh this page. And sometimes it takes a few minutes to get there as, as well, but let's see how fast it, it uploaded. Scroll down a little bit. Okay, so yeah, then we'll, yeah, we'll see it here in the next, probably in the next few seconds. Try refreshing again. Awesome. So now let's just, yeah, let's just go through the full blown setup. So we'll work out of this one. Okay, perfect. So actually, and you know what? Isn't this a different account? So go to hit the drop down on the top left. Yeah, it yeah, switched so, it for some reason. Yeah, and that's the thing too. As you're navigating through Facebook, you'll you'll end up in a, in your old account or in another account. So you'll always want to double check. You'll always want to double check to make sure you're in, the, you're in the right account. I can't stress that enough. Like that happens all the time. So <clears throat> yeah. perfect. So we're we're good. So now, okay. So that intro video is this the is this an old one or is that? That's the one you kind of started setting up with us back on the- Okay, gotcha. Let's time. let's just delete it and we'll just start it all over again. So check the box to the left and then just hit the little trash can. Perfect. Okay, cool. So we'll start from scratch and we'll just click the green button 
and then go into video views. And so here's, here's the thing too. And so as I'm taking you through it, like I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just teach you every aspect of it. Video views is kind of the only, the intro video is the only time you'll run video views. And so that's where I see many, many agents get it wrong is they'll do video for sure. They'll, they'll go out there and they'll do videos and they'll run ads on them. And every time they, they, they run an ad, because it's a video, logically you're thinking, okay, let me go video views. And, yeah. and what we tend to think also is we tend to think if I can get thousands of people to see my video, then that's a good thing. And maybe I'll capture a ton of leads from it. That couldn't be farther than the truth, like ever like that, that that's not the way, the right way to, to, to strategize it because everything, whatever you choose here, Facebook is going to give you. So if we're choosing video views, that's what they're going to give you. But we're not in the business of video views. We're in the business of leads. I need leads. Like I don't need video views, right? Mm-hmm. But, so that's why that's why that could be a little misleading of us thinking, okay, well, dang, 10,000 people view it. There's got to be some leads that come from it. No, it's actually not. No leads are going to come from it because it's just video views. So this intro video is, is pretty much the only time we go video views because the whole objective behind that, the whole strategy behind that reasoning of video views is so we can capture the audience. So as we go and set up the ad, we're going to see a potential reach based on the budget, based on the the area we're targeting. There's a quote unquote potential reach. Let's just say, for example, as we go through, let's say when you put in Charlotte, let's say there's a potential reach of, let's just say example, let's say a hundred thousand people. Based on the budget, based on where you're targeting, based on the radius of the mileage, there's 100,000 people of a potential reach. Now, you're not going to reach all those people at all because it's based on the budget. So we're not going to have a crazy budget on this. We'll have a a little budget. So we're not going to reach all them people. But at the same time, this is our intro. This is how we enter the market. This is how we get cold audience, how we turn a cold audience into a warm audience. So, so again, for example, if there's 100,000 people, a potential reach, but our video reaches 10,000, from the 10,000 views, that becomes our custom audience. That becomes our warm audience. And that becomes the audience that we can then retarget with conversion ads in the future. So all this is, this video view ad is to simply capture your warm audience, to capture the few thousand who actually watch your video. And then again, you'll, you'll use that audience to show other ads to in the future. Okay. That kind of makes sense. Yeah. So it's, it's all about capturing your custom audience. And that's what we're going to do with this video is capture the custom audience, capture that warm audience of those who watch it. So right here, the drop down, go ahead and click on that drop down. We can, this is where we can name each step. There's only three steps to the ad, any ad. There's only these three levels. Okay, campaign, and then the, the, the middle one is your ad set, and then the, the third one is the ad. The campaign is simply just choosing the objective. So what I would title it here is I would go intro video, and then in parentheses, I'll always put the objective we have chose, and that's video views. So intro video, video views, and then the ad set, if I already know where I'm targeting, then I'll put it there. And in this case, it's Charlotte. So I'll just put in the ad set because... When we get to the ad set level, that's where we choose Charlotte. That's where we choose the budget. That's where we choose um, 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 the the date, the start date, the end date. That's all in the ad set level. But just to keep it simple, I'll just simply put Charlotte. That's it. And then the ad is just the, the, the video. So I'll just put intro video. No need to put video views. I'll just put intro video in the, in the, in the, um, yeah, in the title. And the reason why this is so important is because as you start to run ads and, and you start to re- view everything from the dashboard, this is the dashboard behind this little window. That's the dashboard. As you start to see these different ads running, you want to be able to just glance at it and know exactly what ad that is. That's why this titling is so important because if you don't title it, you're not going to know what ad that is. You're going to have to click on it. You're going to have to edit it. You're going to have to go into it. And you're, you're already seven clicks in and maybe 65 seconds later just to find out what ad that was right when you could have just simply gave it a good description and you would have known just by looking at it you know what i mean so yeah. that's why titling it is so important so go to hit continue and we're good there so now as we go in as we go into the first step which is the campaign it's already titled perfect intro video video views 
And so what you'll do all the time is you'll always hit that drop down for special ad category and you'll always go with housing. If you don't go with housing, your ad will just get rejected and then you'll just have to come back in, choose housing, re republish it, and then it'll go up and then it'll go live. But you'll always have to go housing. So scroll down and then down here, you'll always wanna make sure that this is off down here at the campaign budget optimization. So that's off. Sometimes by default, it's on. So you just always wanna make sure it's off um, and then hit next. And that's it, that's step one, that's it. Super basic, super simple. But I truly believe that's the most important is knowing which objective you're going with. Um, and, and, and again, video views will be the only time you really, you really use it for, for the intro. Every ad after this is conversions. So just remember that. And we're gonna do, we're gonna do a ton of ads from this point on together. So, um, but just, just keep in mind, it's, it's conversions. That's what we'll be running most of the time. So here, daily budget, you can go daily budget or you can go lifetime budget. What I do is I, I, tend, to go, I tend to go lifetime budget. Okay. So you can go, you can go lifetime budget. And then, and then what I do here is, I mean, you don't want to, you don't need to spend a, a whole lot. Like you don't have to spend a whole lot. And what I mean by a whole lot is, is maybe more than a hundred bucks. Like you don't have to spend no more than a hundred bucks. You don't, I mean, 50 bucks would be cool. Um, but a hundred bucks is great. If you could spend a hundred on it and what you'll do, what you'll do too is, um, is, is run it for a while, like run it for maybe there's, there's really two strategies on this because it's the intro video. And I want, the, it, this, is, this is how we're capturing the audience. This is what we're gonna do to capture a warm audience. So what some, some clients do is they'll go lifetime a hundred bucks and they'll run it for, they'll just set the calendar date to run for the next 60 days, May 19th to July 19th, for example. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to simply leave it on. Just go daily budget and put a super low budget of like maybe $3 a day, $4 a day, and just let it run. Because again, this is capturing your audience. So those who watch it, they're your custom audience. So because it's an intro video, it's sometimes it's good to let it, let it just run, let it run. But it's different strategies require just different, different forms of testing. So I don't, I don't want to confuse you guys. I just want to keep this super basic. So let's just, let's just leave it at that. Let's go, let's go lifetime budget and go May 19th to let it run, let it run for a while. Let it run to, let it run to July 1st, you know, go, go What's May 19th. What's the biggest difference between the lifetime and the daily? Like I know daily would, it would just run like specific amount every day. Yes. Very good question. So in this case, watch, take, take the, take the July, take the July 1st to to, to July 19th. So if we went, if we went, let's just do some simple math real quick. A hundred divided by, divided by 60. So that's, that's like, that's like not even two bucks a day. That's like not even mm -hmm. two bucks a day. So to answer your question, Shani, if I go, if I change that, if I change the lifetime budget to daily budget and I went $2 a day, Facebook is going to just simply max out that $2 every day and that's it. But if I put a date to it and go lifetime, then I'm giving Facebook the flexibility to spend that money however they want, as long as they spend it within this calendar period. So if I go $2 daily, I'm capping them some, because Facebook runs, it, it, it's a machine and, and every day it's a different that's why we'll review these metrics in a few days. Every day, the numbers fluctuate. So sometimes there's a ton of traffic on Facebook. Sometimes it's just calm. Sometimes it's dead. Sometimes it's it, everyone's on Facebook. So every day is a little different. So if we if we tell Facebook, okay, here's here's a daily budget. Make sure you spend it. Some it, it's it's like forcing them to spend it. Maybe this day they didn't have to spend the full amount. Maybe or or maybe this day. They could have spent five bucks because Facebook was, there was so much traffic, but you capped them at two bucks, mm. right? Yeah. So, so rather than capping them on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm just giving them the flexibility to spend. And it's the same dollar amount. So $2 a day versus a hundred for 60 days. It's the same dollar amount, right? It's okay. the same dollar amount. It's just giving Facebook again, the flexibility to spend it accordingly, to spend it however they wish, as long as they spend it within this time period. 
Does that kind yeah. of make sense? Yep. Yeah. So, so lifetime is, is normally what, what we go with. Um, yeah. And then, and then, and then, and, 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 and what you'll want to do is you'll want to just, we'll review it together. Actually, in this case, the re, the intro video is not, there's nothing to review. I mean, let's just let the damn thing run. As, as long as we have our custom audience set up, then, then we're good, but we'll want to review in the future. As we set up our conversion ads, those are ads that we'll start to review because those are ads that you won't have running for a month or two months. Those are ads. Once you start setting up conversion ads for leads, those are ads that you'll want to start looking at in a few days. So if we set it live to go to, if we set it to go live tomorrow, then we'll review it in four days because now we're trying to capture leads and, 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 and every dollar really matters. Um, so that's, that requires reviewing the metrics, but this one, it doesn't like this, this is just an intro video. It's just a video view ad. It, the metrics don't even matter. Like thousands of people are going to see this no matter what. Um, and that's all that, that's all that matters. But, um, sending an end date on this, that's fine. Cause you don't want to, you don't want to overspend. So yeah, just make sure there's an end date. So May 19th, July 19th. Perfect. That's fine. And, and you know what to tell you too, now that I did that math, which is less than two bucks a day, take it down a month. So go to June 19th, take it June 19th. Yeah. Let it run for a month. Let it run for a month and, and always go the next day, go 6am. So change the time on both 6am, 6am. How is it? So you probably want to make it um, May 20th because it's already the 19th, right? It's past. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what it was. So yeah. June tw or yeah, May 20th to June 20th. Oh, in a specific time. So you probably want to do 3 a.m. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Date. Jeez, this thing is finicky. Here it goes. Okay, perfect. So change that 20th. Um, perfect. Yeah. Okay, good. We're good. So, so yeah, you'll get, you'll get, you'll get a, you'll get a few thousand, thousand views on, on that budget alone and in that time period. Perfect. So we're good. So now we'll scroll down. Okay. So now here's the deal. Custom audiences. As we go on to ad number, let's just call it ad number three, ad number three and on ad number two is going to be conversions. That's when we're already going for leads. Ad number three conversions going for leads. So again, this is the only time we're going video views. After this ad, everything is about capturing leads from, from ad number two and on. So as we go, let's just call it ad number three and on. As we go ad number three and on, you're, when you get to this step in the ad set level, this is the second step, right? This is the ad set level. This is where you would choose, go ahead and click inside search existing audiences. This is where you would choose the custom audience for this intro video. So I don't know if that intro video 20, I don't know if that's this video. Um, we'll double check after, but let's say yeah. that was, let's say that was all you do is click on it. And now this new ad will also target everyone in that audience. So that's the whole reason why we're running this video intro is so we can go capture the few thousand people who actually watch it. That data. becomes, that's the data. Yeah, that becomes our custom audience. That becomes our warm audience. So those who sit here and watch your intro video, we caught their attention on something. So show them another ad. You know, this is someone that lives down the street. So show them another ad. You know, so that this is what it's all about, you guys. This is what it's all about. And this is where this is where agents fell and drop the ball and never see an ROI and never run a Facebook ad again. Because what they don't do is number one, they don't choose the right objective. First of all, they don't choose the right objective. And then number two, they're not running ads consistently to build these audiences. It's all about staying consistent to build these audiences because those who see an ad need to see another one. Those who keep seeing the ads need to see more. And that's what I mentioned. I don't know if you guys remember, but in the very, very beginning of our conversations, it's, it's when I mentioned the, the, the real definition of, of, of just your just basic advertising 101. Basic advertising 101 talks about the way we are psychologically, where we have to see something multiple times before we buy. That's just how we are. Now, some of us are impulse buyers. Some of us just see something random and we buy. Like some of us are like that for sure. My wife's like that. But most of us, when it comes to anything somewhat logical, like when it comes to anything somewhat you know, freaking important to us. We don't just impulse buy it. Like we, we it, it's something we have to see over and over and over. 
And that's, that's why retargeting people who are engaging with your ads is the most important. Because by the time that person sees your third, fourth, or fifth ad, at that point, they're already falling in love with you. And not, I'm not talking physical in love. I'm just talking about just the content. They're really starting to feel what you're doing, right? You're educating them. That, that yeah. You're not going to capture people right away. That's why a person, they'll run an ad and they're like, damn, David, I didn't get shit. For, I didn't get nothing from it. It's like, dude, you can't look at it that way. You have to create the custom audience and you have to stay consistent. You can't just run one ad. Like you got to build these audiences. That's, that's your, your warm audience. They need to keep seeing you. And, and so when you start focusing on one local area and that local area keeps seeing your face, that's when you win. And, and, and that's what a lot of people don't even, don't even look at. They don't even, they don't even, they don't even calculate the value of that. They're just looking for the upfront instant gratification of a lead. And, and that's all everybody cares about. That's all anybody cares about is the instant gratification of a lead or the instant gratification of a sell. Well, sometimes it's not always about that. It's also about the data that you're collecting on the, in, on, on, on the back end, the data of the custom audiences. These are people who actually viewed your stuff. They haven't clicked, they haven't opted in, but they watched your video. That's, that's valuable. Like you have that data, show them another ad, right? So, so this right here is gonna be, is gonna be where, your, where your money is at. It's, it's those who can build their custom audiences wins. That, that's just what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So, so you'll be including intro video viewers. You'll be including, as you put your next second ad out, you'll include the custom audience of those who watch that one. Every video from this point on that you put out that's an actual ad, you're creating a custom audience of. So this one you'll, you'll see in the dropdown, intro video 20. The next one will be, will be seller tip number one video. The next custom audience, seller tip number two video. Every video, you're going to just create a custom audience. And, and as we're running ads, all this data is being collected that you're going to be able to retarget in the future. So right now, there's nothing to put here at all. Um, but also, so click out of this, get rid of the drop down. So from ad number, let's just call it ad number three and on. By, by that time, you should, start, you, should, you should start capturing some leads. By the time we get to ad number three, ad number four, this is all within the same month, right? Because what I'm really trying to teach you to do is, is put out an ad every week, one ad every week. That's ideally what, where, where I, I, I wish you guys were at is, is just one simple ad a week. By the time we're on ad number three and four, that's when we for sure are capturing leads. And then at that point, what you're going to do for, let's just say ad number five is you'll, you'll come here and click on exclude and you'll always exclude your leads. So that's why, that's why the landing page knowing what landing page software you guys are going to be using, that's going to be our next step because our next call has to do with putting the pixel on, on the pages. And it has to also do with setting up our custom audiences around our web pages. Right now we're able to create custom audiences around your video, but there, but the other custom audience that's super, super important is your, is your web pages. So, so for example, I go to your, I go to your web page, I enter my name and email and I download your seller guide. I then land on your thank you page. That's a custom audience. Let me share my screen real quick. Let me, let me show you guys this real quick. So this is what it looks like. So let's say for example, we're running, let's say we're running, let's say we're running ads on, 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 on a seller guide. They see the ad, they click, they come here. Okay. They come here. 10 simple tips to raise the value of your home before selling. They, they land here. Those who land here, but don't fill out the form. That's a custom audience. So that would be an audience of what I call website visitors or landing page visitors or seller guide page visitors, meaning they're only a visitor. They didn't opt in. They're not a lead. They didn't enter their information. They only landed here. And the way we know that is because Facebook gives us our pixel and we're able to put the pixel on the page. That's how Facebook tracks it. Um, so what we would end up doing is taking this link and creating a quote unquote custom audience. So not only do I start, let's, let's just call it from ad number three and on, not only am I gonna be setting up new ads to retarget those who watched my intro video, but I'm also going to include in the custom audience targeting right there where you're at. What I'm also going to include are those who landed on my webpage because those are people who saw my ad, they clicked, they got this far, but for whatever reason, they didn't click the yellow button. 
So someone to go that far in the process, that deserves another, another, another view. Like they need to see another ad, right? They need to see another, another ad. So this right here would be a custom audience around this link of those who landed here. Now, when it comes to the excluding, which is what, I, what, what I'm trying to explain here, when it comes to that, that exclude button that you see there, here's an audience that you would exclude. So as that person clicks, they come here, they, they click the yellow button, they enter their name and email, send me your tip, your 10 tips. It's two pages. That was page number one. This is page number two. So what we do on page number two is we put our Facebook pixel and then we also tell Facebook about this link. We let Facebook specifically know that whoever lands here is a seller guide lead. So now as I go back into Facebook, I'm going to set up a custom audience around seller guide leads. So now as I'm on that step that you're on, go ahead and go ahead and share your screen. As I'm on, as I'm on this second step, which is the ad set. Now what I would do from ad, let's just call it ad number three and on, I would exclude. So now I'm going to click exclude and I'm going to exclude that audience. So go ahead and click it, click exclude. And so now you would, you would click inside the box, search existing audiences right below exclude. No, ex yep. Exclude. So now from ad number three and on every ad, every ad from this point on you're excluding your leads because those people don't need to keep seeing your ads. Right. They've already opted in. Right. So, so, so this right here is where a huge, huge, cut in advertising cost happens. This is where it happens is because now you're targeting the right audiences. That's when your cut, that's when your cost per lead drops significantly because you're now targeting warm audiences and Facebook rewards you for that in the cost per lead. So you're always going to include custom audiences, website visitors who didn't opt in people who watch the intro video, that's always in the include. I always want to include those warm custom audiences. And then I always want to exclude my leads. That's super important. So if you can, if you can start getting good at that and just simply knowing which, who to include, who to exclude, that's when you'll have the best cost per lead because now you're, now you're targeting the most relevant people, you know? So, um, that that's super super important. So now go ahead and change the locations, and we'll get to that in our next few our next few calls as we really start to create these audiences. So right there, you're going to X out United States and just put in put in your um your you can either you can either put in just hit the X X out yeah right there. So you can either put in your your city of Charlotte or you can or you can even put in an, an, an address. You could you could literally put in you know your your address and just go from there. Um, and always the drop down, yeah, always look for the drop down. And then there's the 15 mile minimum radius. Um, and I think the maximum is, is 50, I think. Um, if you hit the drop down, yeah, 50. So you can go as high as you want. Yeah. Yeah. Up to 50, or you can just keep it at 15 and just literally dominate that area. It's totally up to you. Um, yeah, 20 hit enter. Okay. There we go. So, so, so 20 miles. So now go hit the drop down above the address. So that drop down people living in, you'll always, always, always want to go with people living in this location. This is a huge, this makes a huge difference in your ad costs as well. So always go with people living in this location. So that becomes your stopping ground. That becomes your targeting. That's, that's, that's your area. So from this point on, I would focus on just that, like just that area. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go any further out, out of that. Um, so now we'll see down. if it listed, cause I'm okay going out here, but I prefer that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's okay. still, again, that's a, that's a potential reach of 1.3 million. Now, okay. You're not going to reach them all at all, but that's a ton of people. Like, yeah. Yeah. Stay in your local backyard if you can, like, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? So age, you cannot change. Gender, you cannot change. Um, the detailed targeting, this is where you would normally put in different keywords. Um, 
you can, or you can just leave it, leave it wide open. You could put a few keywords in there if you want to, but, but normally leaving it, leaving it wide open and not even putting any keywords because you're targeting such a local area. Don't, don't eliminate anyone. Like, because you can't eliminate, you can't change the age. You can't change the gender. So the, yeah. the keywords don't even matter. Like just take over, brand your face around that entire area, no matter who the heck it is. Like, because those who are interested in, in selling, that's who you're going to attract anyways. So that's, who's going to be engaging with your videos and watching your stuff anyways. So the keywords, the detail targeting are, isn't even necessary. It's necessary when you're marketing a business nationwide then you'll need to narrow it down to, to certain specific keywords, but not if I'm marketing just to a local area, like just leave it wide open. Don't even put in a detail targeting. So yeah. one thing you can do though, is narrow it down a little bit with the language. So that's what I would do for sure is, is type in English and then you'll just hit the drop down English all just go with that one. Perfect. And then scroll down. And that is it. You're going to go automatic placement, leave it at that. That's fine. And then next. So that's it. That's the second step of an ad setup. That is it. We chose the location. We chose the lifetime budget. We chose the calendar date. Um, and that was it. That, that's simple, super basic. And now this is the last and third and final step. So here, you'll just always want to make sure that your Facebook page is right there. Um, the Instagram account, you can click on that. Um, is yours connected? Go ahead. Um, yeah, go I ahead guess not. Okay. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and connect. It might have been connected on your other account. Um, but yeah, connected here as well. That's always a good thing. But but also, um, just just kind of FYI, even though we're connecting uh, it, it's already connected to a Facebook page. Okay, so it's it's connected to a personal page. Yeah, and that's fine. Um, we just have to unconnect it. Well, not your personal page, but that other account, the other the other ad account. Oh yeah, the one um, we didn't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's connected to that other ad account, which is yeah. which is fine. But what I was gonna say is when you, this, this wouldn't run on Instagram anyways, um, because okay. of the dimension, the, 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 the length of the video and, and, and the way it was shot, you shot it widescreen with Instagram is vertical. Right. And then, and then this one's over one minute. So with Instagram, it's only up to one minute. So when you do Instagram ads, everything is the same. Everything is the same, except for one single thing. Click on Charlotte at the top left, click on Charlotte. So everything. So if you want an Instagram ad, just do it separately. Like, like set up one ad for, for, for watch, scroll down. You can, you can set up one ad where it's keep going, keep going a little lower right here, right here, right here. So you can set up one ad and it's automatic placement and it's, and, it, and it's for Facebook and it's Facebook only. And you just leave it on automatic placement. You publish it. It goes live tomorrow and, and, and we're rocking and rolling. And then after that, you can come in and set up a whole different ad and go manual placement, go click on manual placement. You can go manual placement. Let's say we want to run an Instagram ad. So now we go manual placement and we uncheck everything except for Instagram. Yeah. That's how you run an Instagram ad. Simple, super simple. But again, with Instagram, you got to just make sure that the image is the right size and you got to make sure it's no longer than one minute if it's a video. Okay. So, so those ads could be very, very effective as well. So here we'll just leave it automatic hit next. And then back to the third and final step, we'll just make sure that, um, that everything is good there. Okay. So now where it says ad setup, go ahead and click on create ad, and we're going to use existing post. So you'll always want to do this for a video use existing post. It was posted on the business page first. Now we come over here and use existing post. So click on select post. And then you'll find that post, which is right there. Perfect. And then continue. And that's it. So now, as I mentioned before, now that we're here, we can no longer change the text. And even if you go back to your business page, you can't change the text no more either. Okay. Because Facebook's going give, gonna, to gonna give you a notification. Say, and it'll say something like, the post is currently being set up as an ad. It says something like that. And so it won't let you change the text anymore. So that's why that was so important. So now we're good. So now scroll down. And so the call to action button, you can add a button. You can add just for the heck of it, just to put something there. Um, just add, add a button and just do a send message button. That's fine. So just click on send message and learn more is what you'll always want to go with. But in this case, it's send message, just a simple intro video. No one's going to really message you from it because it's not, it's not for that. It's for video views. 
um, but it it clear it it you know it fills the it fills the empty spot right there. And so, as you notice, as we entered the call to action, send message button, now we see our title. So a little bit about why I'm so excited, right? So there goes your title, perfect. So now we'll scroll down, and then that is it. We'll just always want to make sure that the tracking scroll down. And see, that's what we'll set up next. Go ahead and click on that box, website events. So this is an important right now. That pixel needs to be active by the time we get to our next our next ad. So our next ad is all conversions. From ad number two and on, it's always conversions. And that's when we have to put the pixel on a page and, and, and do a lot more work, but that's for our next call. So you could just uncheck it for right now. It's red dot, so just uncheck it. And the pixel doesn't matter because this is simply a video. We're not sending them to a web page. So that is it, you guys, that's publish. Go ahead and publish it. It goes into review, and then, um, and then you'll receive an email within the next, within the is, next, within the. Is this going to run all over Facebook, like on like, um, or is just like a sponsored ad? Is yes, there anywhere else be, it runs? It's going to be a sponsored ad. That's a good question. It's going to be a sponsored ad all over Facebook and all over Facebook's network, which happens to be other random websites as well. So we'll. Well, let's let's find out. Watch. Look. Click on Charlotte in the top left, and so you can see everywhere it, it runs. Scroll down. Go back to um, to the bottom. Go to edit edit placements. So if you scroll down, right now we're on automatic. We're letting Facebook just run it everywhere, everywhere except for Instagram because not it's not optimized for Instagram as far as the dimension and the and the length of the video. But it'll run everywhere else when you go automatic. When you go manual, that's when you can manually, you know, place it wherever you want. But click on manual, and when you click on manual, it simply has everything already checked because it's 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 going off of the automatic placement. So right here, we go manual. Now we see everything checked. So if you scroll down, you'll see everywhere that Facebook places that ad. So every just hover over every check mark. So those are all the different places that we see ads. We, a lot of us don't even pay attention and we don't even notice, but all these different places are where we always see ads. Like when I'm on Facebook, I see ads in all these damn places. So that's where it goes when you go automatic. Now, again, you can go edit and you can, what one strategy is, what one strategy is, and, and this really helps ad cost as well, for sure, is when you uncheck when you uncheck everything, so we would go manual placement, we would we would uncheck everything except for the Facebook newsfeed. That's one strategy as well. So go ahead and, and, and check, check that box again. You unchecked it. Check it again, the feeds. Um, at the very top, it's at minus the feeds. Yep, right there. Check oh, it. I did. Okay. Okay. So so right here you have you have you have everything checked, but again. To help with ad cost, you could uncheck everything except for that top one, Facebook news feed. Instagram feed, uncheck Instagram feed at the top. So you can go all the way down and uncheck everything and only yeah. let it run in the news feed. That's one strategy as well. So if the budget is not the highest, then making every single penny count and go to the most watched section the most viewed section on all of facebook which is the news feed putting all of our eggs in that one basket is is also not a, not a bad app not a bad idea either so but again automatic facebook knows where that traffic is at so that's why i just go automatic i don't even try to try to manual place it anymore um i just let facebook run it where wherever they they feel best where the most engagement's at so Again, that's why you'll just do different different ones. Like one, one you'll run automatic. Another ad you set up, you'll do manual placement. A third ad you set up, maybe you want to test unchecking everything and let it just go on the newsfeed. That's that's where you guys are at right now. In the very, very beginning, it's all about just te testing different variations of these ads. And, and this is what testing is. Automatic, manual, that's that's basic testing. So it's not one one size fits all type of thing. You'll want to you'll want to you'll want to do different 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 placements every now and then, um, but in this case, you could just leave it automatic, and and I would just I would just I would just go with that. So, hit publish, and then um, and then now click on the third one to the to the bot to the left intro video. Click on that third one, 
And then over here, you can see what that ad looks like in, in real time in the newsfeed. So to the very, very right, just click on that drop down next to view more variations. Click on the drop down to the right. Yeah, right there. And then just go down to Facebook desktop newsfeed, the bottom, and you can see that post. So this is what it will look like in the actual newsfeed. So scroll down, um, you'll see it right here. So that's that's the beginning, you guys. That's that's your intro video. Everyone in Charlotte's gonna see this video. Well, at least a lot of them, you know, so based on the budget. But that's how you run a Facebook video ad. Cool. Cool. So now go back to the ads manager and then let's just X out in the top left. So we just published it. Now we're gonna X out in the top left and then it'll bring us back to the dashboard and then we'll X out of all of the blue one selected. So just X out one selected, one selected, or you can uncheck it there and then go to the middle tab, uncheck that one. Click on middle, the middle uh, ad set. Oh, this one? No, ad sets. No, that's blue. Leave that one on. Click on the what? middle tab. So we have three tabs, campaigns, ad sets, Oh, ads. these. These are Sorry. the three tabs. Yeah. So yeah. that second tab, just uncheck this box. And then the okay. first one, campaigns. Or you could just, again, X out the one selected. So that, that's that's an easy way to do it as well. So now it's scheduled. What's not approved just yet is the actual video. So if you click it, right here, it says scheduled. Click on the middle tab, ad sets. This will say scheduled. Click on the third tab, ads. That will say in review. So it's just okay. the video that's being in review. And so you should get an, an email within the next, I would say, three to four hours the most. Um, and that email will say your ad is scheduled or running. And once you receive that email, this will say scheduled and it's approved and it's ready to go live, you know, tomorrow. So here's what we want to do right away. This is the habit you guys want to get in, in right away. Once, once you set this up, which, which is what we did right now, and, and you'll want to keep this in mind for every single video from this point on, which is every video ad, I should say, from this point on. The moment you publish it and now it's set to go live tomorrow, we have to right away go in and hit the three lines to the left and go and create that custom audience. We need the data to start collecting from, from the moment that ad goes live. So click on audiences to the right. There you go. And then over here, again, as you navigate through Facebook, always make sure you're in the right account. So again, by default, they put you in your other account. So in the top right, hit that drop down and go to the other one. That's going to happen That's all right. the time. Click on see more ad accounts. This is it. Is that the right one? Yeah. Okay, my bad. I thought see, click on see more ad accounts. Say so you have you have the okay so that one's just your full name okay perfect so it's just all yeah that's audience. my personal awesome. one perfect 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 okay cool so this this intro video twenty is that is that this one or not I don't think it is no I think that was the one you did with us last time okay let's let's get rid of that one let's let's check the box and just click delete okay perfect so yeah because the date's back on May third okay good so delete this one. And then um, let's set up a new one. So click the blue button, create audience. And all we're going to do is click on video. So custom audience. And then over here, we'll go video. And then next. Okay, perfect. And then over here, we're going to just hit the drop down. And then also, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I mentioned this on our last call, but but I'll just I'll mention it here again because it's super, super important. Here's how, here's how you want to start doing these videos. Like, here's how you want to start really setting it up. Um, because over here, this is where we choose a custom audience, right? Based on how, how long they watched it. Um, 25%, 50, 75, 15 seconds, whatever. You're going to get the biggest, biggest audience of those who watch the least, right? So there's going to be thousands who watch three seconds, thousands who watch 10 seconds, maybe, maybe, maybe even a couple thousand who watched 15 seconds. But by the time you go to 25, 50, 75, or 95, those are probably in the hundreds. It's a smaller audience because not th thousands of people are not going to sit here and watch your, the full, you know, video. Like it, that just doesn't happen um, unless you're running it for a while and spending maybe a ton of, a ton on it then you might have a better chance of getting thousands to watch 75% of your freaking four minute video, right? Not many of us watch that long, but the biggest audience 
in, in most of the time is going to be 15 seconds. So my, my tip is as you start to do videos, more videos, try to don't, don't, don't condense your message. You don't, if it's a two minute video, you don't want to try to get everything in the first 15 seconds at all. That's not what I'm trying to say, but what you want to do in the first 15 seconds is you want to at least capture the attention, let them know what the video is going to be about and let them know why they should stay to the end. So for example, if it was me, I would say something like, let's say, I, let's say I'm giving, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm an agent and I'm going after sellers and, and I'm giving away a seller guide. That's my video. So I would say something like this in the first 15 seconds, and it doesn't even take 15 seconds. I can say everything I'm about to say right now in seven seconds. Here's, here's something I would say. I would say something like, Hey guys, this is David with, with Keller Williams in today's video, I'm going to be giving seller tip number one and seller tip number one is all about renovating your kitchen. Let me tell you why this is so important. And also, if you stay around to the end, I'm going to be giving you way of, I'm going to be giving you my free download, which goes over all these tips in detail, and you're not going to want to miss it. So, so all I'm doing is I'm telling them in the very beginning who I am, what I'm about to talk about, and why they need to stay to the end. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So, so, so try to capture that person's attention right away. Because if, if we can at least let them know what, what it's about, who I am, what this video is going to be about, and why it's so important to stay to the end, that first 15 seconds is going to be your biggest custom audience, your biggest audience. And when you start to retarget them, they know exactly who you are. They know exactly what you're talking about. They know exactly you know, the value you're bringing. That's your custom audience. That's, I, I, that's 15 seconds. You could probably do it in 10 seconds, but really 15 seconds is, 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 is better. Um, because three seconds, 10 seconds, I can sit here and watch three seconds and I'm not interested in that. I could probably even sit here and watch something for maybe 10 seconds and then just be like, ah, but, but if I sat there and watched it for 15 seconds and then you gave me some good information that f- first 15 seconds that I can, I can say a lot in 15 seconds to keep it, to keep your attention or I can at least try, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so in the first 15 seconds, try to, try to just try to, try to let them know what the video is going to be about and why it's so important to stay to the end and, and staying to the end is because you're going to give them a free download, you know, and, and even though they can click the learn more button in the first two seconds and go straight to your seller guide. Yeah. But at least I'm trying to somewhat, um, um, throw a little psychology in there and just say, Hey, if you stay to the end, I'm going to give you guys my free seller guide that covers this, this, and this, and this, you're not going to want to miss out or you're not going to want to miss it. You know, something like that. But the first 15 seconds, that's going to be your best audience. So click on that. And then let's just start creating this audience around, around that video. So choose videos in the top, right. And then go ahead and choose that video. Yeah. Facebook page. And then you'll see that video right below. Perfect. Okay. So that first one, so just check that box, hit confirm, and then give it an audience name. And you could just put intro video. And then in parentheses, I'd put 15 seconds. Perfect. And that's it. So create audience. That's what you want to do all the time. You guys is always, always, always create that custom audience right after you set up that video ad. Okay. And that's it. So, so now that custom audience becomes an audience that we can start going and click done that we can start retargeting by the time we get to ad number two, as we run our next ad, that's an audience we can retarget. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So that's how you do it. You guys, any, any questions at all? No, it seems pretty straightforward. Yes. Yes. And then. Next, our next call is, is now going into, into more targeting and, and detail targeting and, and installing a pixel on, on some type of web page. So what you guys want to want to really try to find out is if, cause I know, I know Keller Williams has command. I don't know if you guys have command or, or, um, or not, but I think there's web pages. We do. Yeah. Are, is there landing pages in that? Like you have a landing page. Right. I've heard there is. I don't know too much about command, you but, but um, it's under what, designs. I don't know. I think it's under campaigns, Megan. Okay. I think. 
Oh, yeah. Click on paid ads. <laughs> 